rose from the uh, Rock Foundation for welcome along. We've allocated 10 minutes in total, including questions, and they'll ring a bell when your time's up. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I'm Paul Burrows, representing Stroke Foundation Hamilton. Uh, the reason I'm here today is because in New Zealand today, one person an hour will have a stroke. There'll be 24 people in New Zealand will have a stroke today. A third of those people will be disabled to the extent that they need to use a mobility aid, such as a walking frame or a wheelchair. There's a considerable population of stroke survivors in Hamilton, and the current theatre has not been accessible for the lifetime it's been there, of around what, 54 years it's been there now. It hasn't been easily accessible for those people, and it is not going to be accessible if it's refurbished in all probability. Our preference is that a new theatre be built which is accessible to everybody in the community, including the disabled who have to use mobility aids such as walking frames, wheelchairs and other assisting uh, mobility aids. The current theatre is not accessible easily, has not been for its lifetime. We expect hopefully that the new theatre, a refurbished, if that's the option that happens, is likely to be a compromise and will not be easily accessible. Our preference is for a new theatre to be accessible, which has sufficient parking, undercover parking, for people that are using mobility vehicles to easily get in and out of a vehicle, in and out of a theatre. That's the extent of my submission. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity. Okay, thank you, Paul. I'll just uh, go to Councillor Mallet. He's got a question for you. Thank you. <clears throat> Uh, the extent of your um, submission is, uh, I, I just want to get to what extent your submission is you want a new build or you want, no matter what happens, you want there to be accessibility for disabled. If the, if the option is a new build, we, we think... Or, or a refurbishment. Or a refurbishment. We think that it probably will sort of, you'd be restricted by the, the footprint that's there now and the structure that's there now, and it's unlikely to be totally accessible. OK, but, but let's not speculate. If, if it can be dealt with in the current... If it could be made fully accessible to everybody in New Zealand <coughs> in, in the community who's using a mobility aid, such as a wheelchair or a walking frame, well, we would accept that. OK, that's, that's very clear. Thank you. Right, any other questions? <coughs> no? Thank you very much, Paul, for coming along and uh, for your submission. Right, the next uh, submission is um, Orchestra Central, Susan Trodden. Hi, Susan. Welcome along. We've allocated 10 minutes uh, for you to speak, and that includes questions. Thanks. A paradigm shift occurred in the mindset of one of New Zealand's <coughs> orchestras. At over 100 years old, it was finally apparent to the players on the day that they alone were not the orchestra. In retrospect, it was obvious the orchestra had existed long before any of them had ever been born, let alone played an instrument, and would continue to do so after they were all gone. It's a challenging concept to get your head around, but it can be applied to many situations. Other arts groups, other not-for-profit organisations, businesses in the for-profit sector, even a building or a venue can take this way of thinking and use it to mould <coughs> their thinking when it comes to strategy because if an entity existed long before the current workforce and is to continue long after, maybe the way we do business now and the way we plan for the future and the way we dream about what could be might need to change too. The current thinking and strategic planning is to uncover purpose. That's the why. And to be able to define that in just a handful of words. I guess it's highly improb uh, improbable that an orchestra or whomever of a century ago spent very much time in workshops, forums or brainstorming sessions thinking about that, that I bet my last concert <coughs> ticket that they knew right from the beginning what they were about. <coughs> and in the case of the orchestra, it probably went something like this. We want people to have somewhere to come and listen to great music. We want people to have somewhere to come and play great music. We want to contribute to our community through culture 
And it's possible that they also thought we want a place to call home that our community can enjoy even when we're not there. Suddenly it's obvious that purpose can last far longer than any number of dedicated employees, volunteers or governors. But what about then when purpose changes? What when was what was right a century ago no longer is. The people and the environment and the current needs might change, but the premise remains the same. To uncover the purpose, to work out who can lead the revolution with skill, vision, tenacity, and to create a unified sense of this is bigger than all of us. That is the key to success. In the case of the orchestra, our purpose is little different to what it was in 1906 when we were established, and that is to joy share the joy of music with the Hamilton community. In the case of the Founders Theatre, that purpose hasn't really changed either. To be a meeting, a meeting place, somewhere to share and showcase arts and culture, and to be a place we're all proud of. I'm not sure that Founders Theatre is that place anymore. And I'd add that a whole lot more work needs to be done on uncovering the how before we can make qualified, rational decisions that will last beyond this generation. The question remains, if our purpose is this list, that's the why, but the way we do it, the how, has changed. We now need the who. We support the um, proposal put forward by Leonard earlier this morning and ask this question, maybe he's the answer, or his group is the answer. Who will lead us towards something better suited to our community now, but that will be a lasting legacy long after the current orchestra has stopped playing? Thank you, Susan. Questions, Councillor Mallet? Thank you, Susan. Um, you said a place to call home when, even when no one is there. What does that mean? What we're talking about is the idea of that building that belongs to the city, that just because we're not there playing that day doesn't mean that it's our home or the home of culture. Realistically, no venue is going to have someone 24-7, but that doesn't mean it's not the home of culture in our town. Okay. Any other questions, Susan? <coughs> No. Thank you very much, Susan, for coming along and speaking to us and uh, for the way in which you summarised your position. <coughs> My councillors, I don't have a green light on this, but I am thinking that these are the Hillcrest High students. Fantastic. All right, come on down, girls, and talk to us about your submission. Mm. So we've allocated you 10 minutes, and that includes the questions, and um, we give you a bell ding when, uh, when your time's running out. Cool, thank you. All right, and speak into the microphones too because it helps with the live cam. Yeah, we can move them around and stuff. Brilliant. Right. Um, Off you go. So we are sort of, we've taken up this issue as part of a assignment at school for our sociology assignment. We've explored a um, couple of policies around the issue and stuff like that. And we came to a conclusion that we'd like to rebuild the, we, we'd ideally like for the theatre to be rebuilt. We think that a rebuilt theatre will increase the interest in the theatre because currently, oh well, uh, there was a, in 2013, um, a survey, I, I, apparently, about, um, that explored a couple of, uh, it spoke to the residents who said that the satisfaction in the theatre's facilities had decreased a lot. And although, um, a refurbishment couldn't fix these facilities or to an extent. We think that a rebuild would majorly increase it from there. It's sort of the type of thing that is limited and a rebuild would extend that. We want the new theatre to be, or we'd want a new theatre to be more of a landmark in Hamilton and a central to the arts because the arts hasn't been majorly focused on due to the lack of area for us to be able to. And as you may know, 25 bookings were cancelled because of the founders' their closure. Um, there is nowhere else for these performances to be staged, which this saddens me a lot as, as well as us here. As I'm sure it saddens a lot of the other community members as well, despite this issue, however, I think we should be thinking about the long-term consequences this is making in their decision. Um, refurbishing would solve this issue on more of a short-term basis, therefore as other theatre facilities across New Zealand may improve, founders will become more of an 
more um, out of date. So rebuilding the whole thing would be a lot better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just agreeing on that with the theatre should be completely rebuilt as they are already limited and if we were to refurbish it, it would be nearly, like in the near future, it would be outdated very soon. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, hearing that some people want found a theatre completely demolished leaves a big hole in my heart and I feel like it would leave in a big hole in other people's hearts too as me personally whilst growing up in Hamilton <coughs> Founders Theatre um, I've utilised the f facilities at Founders Theatre through productions and various prize givings for school related and in my experience I've seen that the facilities are outdated and although refurbishing could fix this I think that the theatre will still look and appear the same and it is an expensive cost for such a small change but rebuilding the theatre is a whole new experience and gives Hamilton, the city of the future, a place to express more memories for the arts. Thanks. Okay. All right, look, thank you very much for that. So I might just ask you a question. So have all of you at some time performed at the Founders Theatre? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you all have, have right? Yeah. Childhood shows and that ah, sort of thing. Ah, right. So quite a, for yeah. quite a number <coughs> yeah. of years you've been performing at the theatre. So you've got experience of what it's like to be a performer yeah. 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 as yeah. well as attending as a member of the public. Yeah. And our Hillcrest High prize giving is held there. So. True. It was. Yeah. And for your project, so you said it was a project for your sociology class. Yeah. So just, just uh, in a very short uh, couple of sentences, summarise the methodology you used to develop up your, um, your views here. Um, we've... Put a lot, we've researched the issue a lot, mm -hmm. so we've explored um, different articles around the issue, we've spoken to some people, mm -hmm. we spoke to Tim McIndoe, the MP, mm -hmm. um, and we've made a Facebook page mm -hmm. and gained followers for that as well. Yeah, we've spoken to a lot of the students to get right. their opinion, and from, from that we've seen that the community really would like for the new theatre or some type of theatre to be. All right, yeah, thank you, thank for you sure. for explaining your methodology. Very good. All right, questions? Councillor Mallet. Did you get any feedback as to where the theatre should be? That's something we have we've considered. Um, the current spot is Ideal. obviously it's accessible and everything <coughs> like that, but perhaps in the centre of town would be more of a central area. Because we, our main, well, our main goal or idea is that we'd like for it, to, the theatre, to become a landmark. So we want it to be obviously a big part of yeah, a Hamilton noticeable Social. feature to Hamilton City. Okay, thank you, <coughs> Councillor Wilson. Yeah, look, thank you for coming along. My question is going to be regarding finance, because as um, <laughs> Uh, people who will eventually buy your own home and live in the city and, and have a family and all of those things. Um, you'll get four bills a year from us, the City Council, it's called rates, um, and we will expect the rate payer to cover the cost. So whether it's us putting 30 million into a build new project and the community funding the, le uh, the, the balance, it still means the ratepayers of Hamilton over a prolonged period of time will see their rates go up for this type of facility. What's your feeling about that? And what's the feedback you've had from your, from your followers on Facebook? Are you comfortable <coughs> with that, that there is a financial consequence? It's not just a, this is our thought, but actually this could affect us financially. Um, yeah, we have like obviously taken the finance into consideration, but we were more basing um, our Facebook page um, on who would actually want the <coughs> theatre in Hamilton. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah, um, yeah, we've we th we considered the idea of refurbishment, which is a cheaper cost, but at the same time, it's not it's in the sh yeah in the short term. Long term, sorry. Um, except the change would not be <coughs> as like prominent, and a new theatre would be a big change, which we think 
the whole idea is that it would attract more people to the theatre as well. And yeah, that's a, that's a main reason why we'd say that it's better to spend the extra money. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? No? Look, thank you very much for coming along and for the fantastic way that you articulated your position. It was really, really helpful for us to hear that. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, right, so the next um, speaker is Ron Braithwaite. Ron, where are you? Okay, thank you. No, David Braithwaite was here before. So, Ron, you, you're you representing uh, Hamilton Operatics, are you? I'm not you? necessarily representing Oh, them. right. I am in so, Oh, Hamilton right, so are you, are you speaking... Okay. I'm speaking... Are you speaking as an individual, are individual. you? Individual. You're not a splinter group, Right, man. okay. No, I'm not. <laughs> All right, off you go then. <coughs> okay. Um, my connection with Founders Theatre has been quite long. Um, it started basically just over 45 years ago when I came here to university. Um, I met my wife doing a show in 1974, Fitter on the Roof with Operatic Society. I've been involved basically ever since. I'm now a life member of the society. Um, I have been on stage and backstage. Um, and most recently, of course, I've been backstage as a flyman which, of course, is where most of the problems with founders is. Um, my basic position is um, you've got to have something. At the very least, a rebuild, but preferably a new building. <coughs> Why preferably a new building? Um, simply because Hamilton is not going to get smaller. It is going to get bigger. Um, and to rebuild founders, um, no matter how hard you try, it is still dressing up a silk purse, as I say, here, or the other way around, I'm sorry, <laughs> <laughs> whichever way you like. Um, and there are certain disadvantages to where founders is at present. And the main, the biggest one is parking. Um, when there is a show on, uh, getting parking around founders in daytime is impossible. In nighttime, if there happens to be a cricket game or a rugby match, and it invariably happens, uh, it is also impossible. So, in my opinion, okay, if you build a bridge across the Waikato River and it's only two lanes, and then many years later you actually have to try and squeeze four lanes onto it, <coughs> it is false economy. If you build a theatre for 1,200 people, which is what Founders Theatre is at present, it's going to be false economy. Why do we need a theatre? We need a pro-arch theatre. Um, for all its fantastic abilities, the <sighs> arena is not a theatre. It can never be a, um, a flying theatre because the ceiling of the arena is simply not high enough. If you were to do that, you have to have a, a build of a stage and a stage area every time you put a show on. That's really counterproductive in terms of man hours that you have to spend doing that. Um, why am I motivated to come here? Um, I've already indicated that you know I'm passionate about musical theatre, but also being involved with Fraser High School for 41 years. I brought students to shows. I took them in there, taught them how to um, work inside the theatre. And I don't know how many hundred kids I've influenced into liking the theatre, doing things in the theatre, and coming to shows that they would never perhaps have come to before. Um, my wife, unfortunately, is able not able to be here because she has to work. I'm retired now. Um, and she is even more passionate, I suppose, about, about the, the theatre. Um, and at the very least, she wants, at the very least, she wants founders to, to be rebuilt. Her parents and grandparents both put money into 
uh, found this theatre as the benches way back then. And at that stage, none of their family were involved in theatre or things to do with theatre. It was just something that they believed this city needed. Uh, recently, I've had the good fortune to travel through Europe and visited all the beautiful old theatres uh, in Europe. And they all don't have the same problems. I mean, they've all been built many hundreds of years ago in some cases. And they don't have earthquakes to, to really <laughs> worry about. And they are the extreme end. They are so opulent that <laughs> it's unbelievable. We don't need an opulent theatre. We need a working theatre, one that people can go to and enjoy. Um, and yeah, I guess, as I said last time I spoke in front of you, <laughs> uh, mothballing founders would be extremely short-sighted. I don't believe fixing it is an option. It would become too small too quickly, and there really isn't any way to put nippon clip-ons on a theatre. <coughs> OK, thank you very much. Questions? Or Ron. Councillor Toomey. Yeah, Ron, um, you're not the only person who's raised the issue of parking in the vicinity of the uh, mm. Founders Theatre. Yep. Um, 1,200 seats, you get about 550 cars for that event. Uh, you go to the uh, Waikato Stadium with 26,000 uh, people there, you've got about 13,000 cars. Mm. Um, one of the issues I think with actually having to provide parking is if you look at field days, you sit in the car park for two or three hours before you get out of there. And I know it's a small amount of time. If you have a car park provided, um, then of course you've got to sit in that car park after the event. So the way I see it is that the, um, the stadium works extremely well because people actually have to walk uh, a little bit. And uh, I think we have to get away from this idea of actually being able to park right outside the shop you want to shop at or park right outside the theatre that you want to go to. So what's your question, Councillor Toomey? Do you believe that uh, a car park would be um, <coughs> taking up the, the green space, which is there at the present time? I wouldn't yeah. like to see that. No, um, I would not. <laughs> so, so why do you want to have to, have to park okay. right outside um, the door? Your audience, high-heeled shoes, walking, long distances, not usually um, appreciated. It doesn't have to be really, really close. I mean, you can, in fact, utilise perhaps a car park that already exists uh, in uh, Hamilton, uh, down by Knoxley, for example. But in order to do that, you would need to perhaps make sure that there was you know, a relatively good bus service. Um, certainly, if we were to build somewhere down that end on the river, 